You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods, Ink's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. And y'all, anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's go. Alright. <clears throat> it's getting dark. Real dark. We should have a flashlight or something, or at least a phone to light the path. The moist grass beneath my shoes squishes with each step as I pass between the thick tree trunks. And with every step, the smell of ash gets stronger. I tell myself I know where I'm headed, but in reality I'm completely lost at this point. I lift my arm to wipe my eyes, the, s the salt from my tears sending a stinging pain down my forearm. A snapping sound breaks the quiet ambience of the forest. I stop, my ears instinctively twitching in the direction of the noise. I turn to look. But it's too dark to see anything except the outlines of the trees. Could I have just, could it just been an animal? Though considering the last time I was out here, I'm not taking anything for granted. I pull the shard of glass from my hoodie, adjusting my grip around the jagged edges. I see you! I call out in a jagged voice, my eyes darting between the trees. I I'm armed! But no one answers. As I scan my surroundings, however, the sound of something else fills the silence. Running water. I so slowly I begin walking. As the sound grows louder, the forest floor grows muddier. Soon, moss makes up most of the ground and my shoes sink a good few centimeters with every step, moisture seeping in through the soles. Trees become more sparse and are replaced by rocks and large boulders overgrown with roots and moss. In between them, a large spring emerges, the water rapidly rushing downstream. I sit down on a nearby rock with a heavy sigh, feeling my stomach roaring and my head beginning to ache. God, my entire body's aching. Fuck. Okay, Cody, you've got two options at this point. You can do what you came here to do, or you can try to find your way back into town. Or I could just end it. It's almost comical how familiar the option feels. How after so many years of suicidal thoughts, the option of taking my own life tacks itself onto any fork in the road as a third path. But Bless <coughs> 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 oh. For me, sneezes come in pairs. No matter how trivial the decision. I could get out of bed today, or I could look stay in. Or I could mend it all and be done with it. Should I make that important call or ignore it? Or should I kill myself? I chuckle at the ridiculousness of the thought, despite the morbid subject. Death becomes a comfort, a safety blanket, knowing it's always an option. An easy way to solve it. An easy way to solve it all. I stopped fearing it a long time ago. Coming here didn't change anything. I run my fingers through the fur on my left arm, feeling the crusty fur, dry, fur from dried blood around the recent wounds. I managed three days. I could say it's a new record, but since I can't remember what happened before I got here, it's hard to tell. I wish I could say I had something to stop me from doing it. I've always envied those with faith. Those with the capacity to believe in something greater than themselves. Religion, spirituality, a higher calling, or just a cause. Something to lend structure and context to every day. Something to compare and contrast their lives against. Wish I had that. Who am I kidding? I'm not looking for something to live for. I'm looking for something to die for. An excuse to not go out like a coward. People will die for their country, their beliefs, their way of life. Perhaps this cause could be something to die for. Finding those responsible for this whole mess. Those Beasts with the faces of men, as Shepard called them. Shepard. I shake my head, shutting my eyes to rid myself of the thoughts of what happened. Carefully, I, sip, I slip the piece of glass back in my pocket. At the same time, my paw strokes my neck, feeling the pulsating headache slowly worsening. I've made my decision. And I guess this is as good a place as any. I strain my ears for any strange noises one last time before I take a deep breath. Second, y'all. Coffee time. Alrighty. Delicious coffee. We've got a tropical storm, I think, passing through this area today. Bush bring a hell of a lot of water with it. Alright. Hey! I'm not really expecting an answer, but even so, I lift my paws and cup them around my muzzle. Hey! Why am I here? 
I know you had something to do with this. I saw you at the hospital. Why'd you bring me here? I want to go back. Take me back. Answer me. Fucking answer me. I shout, standing up and kicking my foot at the soggy ground. Uh-oh. He's not coming. I stumble back, tripping over my tail and landing in the wet moss. H who's there? He never does when you want him to. Well, you're, you're in my head. Only when he has his job to attend to. G get out of my head. Stop yelling. Someone's here. I said get out! I snap my head in the direction of the noise, breaking the silence. I crawl up behind the rock, carefully peeking over the edge into the darkness. A silhouette emerges among the trees. I hold my breath, straining my eyes. They limp through the moss, grunting with each step. And stop, looking from side to side, lifting their muzzle. They sound stuffed, and after a moment they let out a frustrated grunt. Found you. The legs push me up and away before I even realize I'm doing it, and I run, hurtling through moss and mud, zigzagging boulders and trees. Behind me, more footsteps. They're getting louder. The ground becomes dry, firm, while difficult to see. It feels like an overgrown road, or at least what remains of it. At the same time, the sound of running water grows louder along with it. Then a low metallic groan joins the forest choir until a large building appears between the trees. Two houses, one on either side of the river, with a corridor connecting them, suspended abo above the water. It'll be pitch black in there. I can lose them inside. I take a deep breath and keep running, up, ag up against the decaying wooden wall, pushing my paws against it as I scurry along the exterior. I almost stumble as my foot hits steps, but I regain my balance and sprint up the stairs, paws still pressed to the warped planks of the wall. An opening appears, and I squeeze between the rotting wood to make it inside. My, sh my shoe snags on the crack and I trip, catching myself on knees and paws. The smell of rotting wood and peeling paint is overwhelming compared to the fresh air outside. I look back at the only source of light, the crack I just crawled through, letting in a gentle stream of moonlight from the trees above. Did I lose them? Nope. Shit! I scramble backwards into the dark, covering my mouth with the paw to silence my heavy breathing. I know you're in here! I carefully move back, slowly sliding along the floor. I heard you in the woods. I can smell you. I've got your scent. They slowly turn their heads, sniffing the air as they step inside. The scent of prey, the scent of fear, and the scent of blood. Fuck! My arm! I keep crawling back until I bump into something cold. Their head snaps towards me. There you are. I jump to my feet and run into the dark, my eyes slowly adjusting to the black environment bumping into barrels along the way. But they are just too slow as the creaking floor suddenly gives out and I fall. My chest hits the opposite side of the hole with a heavy thud. As soon as I'm able to gasp for air, I can't help but scream. Soon after, I hurried footsteps, hurried footsteps down what sounds like a staircase followed by laughter. I got you! I fucking got you! You're so fucking stupid! Second y'all. Coffee time. The man kicks a chair out of the way, knocking it into a rickety table. Ah, fuck! My nuts! I try to stand up, but my left arm gives out under me when I'm pushing myself up. From the shadows into the moonlight seeping through a glassless window emerges my pursuer. Yeesh. You! The wolf from last night, George's house. The same one who stabbed Lucas. Did you miss me, raccoon? Because I sure as fuck missed you. His slim body leans down over me, his paw violently ripping his shirt open. You see what you fucking did to me? Even in the dim light, the crude tattoo is clearly visible, along with the severely bruised and infected scarring it caused. You know how bad this shit hurts? He grabs me by the hoodie, and in the dark, the glint of a blade becomes visible in his right paw. Where's my meth? He whispers through gritted teeth, most of them missing. I don't have it. Give it to me. I don't have it. Where is it? He releases his grip and I fall back down on the damp wooden floor. I raise my working arm to my bruised cheek. The wolf begins pacing back and forth across the room. His breathing heavy and his paw is shaking. I mowed my compensation. He said I could have it. All of it. He suddenly stops, lifting the blade towards me. But then you and that mutt and that 
fucking rat. He turns his head, spitting. And to show up and ruin everything. Ooh. But now I got you. You're right where I need you. He stepped closer. Tell him you know where it is. What? Huh? And that you'll give it to him. I don't- I don't understand. Tell him you know where it is. I, I know where it is. He stops. If you just let me go, I'll give it to you. All of it. The wolf takes a step back, eyeing me up and down. Or you tell me where it is and I'll hand you over to them dead or s and save you the torture. He swivels the blade in his paw. Didn't go too well last time, now did it? That didn't end well for your friend. For Georgie, Georgie was sloppy. He didn't deserve a spot at their fucking table. He lifts the knife to point it at himself. But I do. And you? Before pointing it at me. You're my ticket. I'm no ticket. Oh yes you are. His paw falls to grab his crotch. And for what you did to me, I'll cut off your balls and shove them down your throat till you choke. I crawl back. But we both stop as the knife in his paw begins to shimmer. Our head turns towards the wall where a light shines through the cracks from a distance. Faint footsteps become audible outside. He's here. What? Who? He turns back to me, taking a hurried step forward. I pull, the piece, I pull a piece of mirror from my pocket, holding it out in front of me. Let me go, you'll never see that meth again. His expression turns to shock, but only for a moment. He was getting it from Georgie. He was getting it from George. I know you were getting it from George. A lie in a hushed tone. He hesitates, rocking back and forth on his feet. Looks like you were right. The footsteps outside turn from wet grass to wood. I dart my eyes between the cracks in the wall and the wolf. Until you find a new one, I'm your dealer. And if I die, it's gone. Before a door somewhere rattles. Truce? The canine lets out a frustrated huff. And I realize that right now my life lies in the hand of an addict and the promise of a fix. Hmm. Second y'all. What's he doing here? From the dark comes a man. And behind him a tall, brooding figure almost twice his height. Good evening to you too. What the fuck is this? Why'd you bring the freak? I presume you must mean Mr. Hansen. The man, a well-groomed hyena, extends his paw, tilting his head in a condescending gesture. Clark. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person, Clark Hansen. The wolf hesitantly shakes his paw, his grip loose, his eyes on the towering brute of a dog behind. My name is... The Red Prince. The hyena smiles, giving a quick nod. That's right. What do you want? The hyena lifts his paw to the table next to them. I was hoping we might be able to sit down for a chat. The wolf takes a step back, startled as the brute steps forward. He bends down, picks up the chair, picking up the chair the wolf had kicked over earlier. Please, sit. Hansen slowly sits down and leans back, adjusting his groin in the process. The prince begins removing his coat, turning and handing it to the white dog. Did you come here alone? Yeah, I just... He trails off. Hmm? I mean, I just don't understand why here and not at the... Ah, uh, yes, I'm sorry, but our usual accommodations are unfortunately taken tonight. He offers Hansen a polite smile, raising his eyebrows in obvious false excitement. Another game. The prince leans back as he sits down, crossing one leg over the other and letting out a satisfied sigh. Now, do you know why I called you here? I can take a pretty good guess. And what would that guess be? I'm guessing it had something to do with Georgie. Correct, though more precisely, your task last night. Lahina picks his bag off the floor, placing it on the table. The wolf, however, has his eyes on the titan looming just out of reach of the light. As the prince opens his back, he notices the wolf's gaze. Ah yes, Benny, my boy. Benny the tall beast breaks eye contact with the wolf, who in comparison looks short. Would you mind waiting outside? I believe Mr. Hansen would prefer a more private setting. 
Benny's eyes go back and forth between the, pr- between the prince and the wolf. But after a moment, he nods, t- walking off into the shadows. Both canines sit in silence as the snow-colored Goliath's heavy footsteps echo off the walls, until the door is once again heard creaking on its hinges before shutting. The hyena offers the wolf a reassuring smile as he pulls a notebook from the bag and fishes a ballpoint pen out of his jacket. Right now, right. Now, would you be so kind as to recount last night's events to the best of your recollection, please? His digits carefully flip through the pages. The fuck is this, some sort of interrogation? The hyena immediately stops to meet his gaze. Mr. Hansen, I can assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. I simply want to understand your view of the events. It's a standard procedure for all our employees, really. Simply to keep a written account of the events. The wolf hesitantly nods, sighing. His leg bounces below the table, and his long, untrimmed claws scratch at his chest. Good. Now then, why don't we begin with the basics? He presses the back of the pen against the table, producing the ballpoint pen. How did you first come to meet Mr. Falk? The gray canine swipes his paw under his nose, producing a stuffled sniffle. Meth. He deals meth. The prince nods, the pen in his paw scribbling across the page in his book. Dealt. The scribbling stops as the hyena looks up, meeting the wolf's eyes with a saddened look. He leans forward, tilting his head ever so slightly to the side, clasps his paws together. And, man, what a tragic loss it is to us all. My deepest condolences, Mr. Hansen. Well, it is water time. Hansen looks off to the side, pulling back. He was just a dealer. The prince leans back in his chair again, the sorrowful expression on his face gone just as quickly as it came. Of course. Was anyone aware of your contact with Mr. Falk? The wolf shakes his head. Friends, family, co-workers. Hansen leans forward, sighing in frustration. The prince simply looks back down at his notes, writing. And I understand you performed some services for him as well. Yeah, when I was broke and needed a fix. Could you describe those services, please? The wolf's head drops, idly fitting with his claws. I needed a fix, okay? I didn't didn't have any cash. He suddenly sits up straight, throwing his arms out. Fine, yeah, I fucked him, okay? That what you wanted to hear? Before falling back with a heavy sigh, the prince readjusts in his seat, tilting his head tilting his head pedagogically and clearing his throat, as if to make sure he has he has Hansen's attention. Were there any other services you performed for Mr. Falk? No. Why? The striped canine swivels the pen in the air. Something relating to his job. Hansen leans forward again, but this time further, elbows on his knees, he rubs his face in his paws. Averting his gaze, he bites his cheek and scratches his neck. Yeah. Wanted me to snatch some kid for him. Pony. The prince calmly notes it with his pen before turning the page. So, Mr. Falk was delegating his duties. The wolf shrugs, still avoiding eye contact. I don't know. Don't care. Just needed a hit, you know? I didn't. He didn't tell me what it was for. Just told me to grab the first horse I saw. The prince pauses. He specifically requested an equine. Hansen doesn't answer. He sighs, leaning back in the chair while the hyena scribbles in his book. What happened to the ceiling? The wolf looks up with a confused expression. The prince lifts his pen, pointing towards the recent hole in the planks. It collapsed, I guess. I don't know. It was like that when I got here. Let's move on to last night. When would you say you first received word of the task? When you called? Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!